If you've seen part 4 of my Rangdan Xenocide videos, then you're already familiar with the fact that I love taking classical studies or ancient history and applying them to fictional universes. 40k is rather simple since they basically are the legally distinct Roman Empire already, and we already know that the Rangdan Crusades are based off from the Punic Wars. In today's video, I'm going to try and break down the current setting of 40k and try and figure out where exactly in Roman history we're at. So I can say pretty confidently and with a decent amount of chest here that the Imperium right now is experiencing what in Roman history was called the, the Five Good Emperors. To give you as little bit of historical context as possible without turning this into a history lecture, the second century in our current timeline is marked as the Golden Age of the Roman Empire, and that featured emperors like Trajan, Hadrian, uh, Nerva, you've got Marcus Aurelius. 40k has this tendency of copying Roman history, and I don't see why the current events would be any different. Gilliman coming back is essentially Trajan being appointed as emperor. Before Gilliman, the Imperium was suffering a long streak of stagnation, which could be compared to the Flavian dynasties of Rome. Once Hadrian came, or no, sorry, Trajan came in, Rome turned from a slowly decaying cesspool into a thriving empire. Drawing similarities here to Gilliman, Trajan would go around the empire and would improve the logistics anywhere possible. He would build roads, he would build amphitheaters, he would build markets, and that is almost exactly what Gilliman's trying to do in his Indomitus Crusade. Now, we also know that they don't follow Roman history exactly, so we don't expect the five good emperors to play out exactly as they would. One of the things that Trajan was really, really good at was delegating. Trajan would go and he would talk to people like Apollodorus, who, in my opinion, is Belisarius Call in 40k, and then you've got someone like Commander Dante who would represent Lucius Quietus. Belisarius Call and Apollodorus are probably the clearest and easiest to make connection, as Apollodorus' job was to create a corridor or passageway for Rome to get to Germania. This to me is a metaphor for Belisarius Call trying to bridge the gap between Imperium Sanctus and Imperium Nihilus. That might be a little too on the nose, but I really like that theory. And Commander Dante being Lucius Quietus, well, that's pretty straightforward. Commander Dante is a very experienced, very well-respected, well-spoken chapter master. That almost fits exactly with Lucius Quietus, and he was entrusted completely by Trajan. And if all that wasn't close enough, Lucius Quietus, during the time of the Roman Empire, was in charge of the Middle East. He was essentially the Praetorian of the Middle East, kind of like how Commander Dante is the Praetorian of Imperium Nihilus. The lion is the one that I got stuck on for the longest time because I wasn't entirely sure who he represented of the five emperors, but after doing quite a bit of thought and reading back on Lion Son of the Forest, I think it's pretty obvious that the lion is Marcus Aurelius, this stoic, honor-bound man doing everything he can to hold the Imperium together. Now that we've gone over the Primarchs that are currently in the setting, I think it's important to look at the Primarchs that are coming back, or might come back, and how they would fit into the setting. So if Lehman Russ or Jagat Tycon were to come back, it would be very similar to an Antonina situation where largely throughout the Imperium nothing would change, shit would just kind of happen around them. And that's not to say that they wouldn't be winning great battles, because they would, they would be winning phenomenal battles, but battles don't win wars. Logistics, supply lines, and that's how you win a war. Logistics win wars, which is why Gilliman coming back and representing Trajan was so important. I think Dorn is best represented by Hadrian, because very similar to Gilliman, nobody has the logistical understanding or the understanding of what it takes to run an empire and actually win a war quite as well as Dorn and Gilliman, representing Hadrian and Trajan, respectively. I also want to put Korax in the position of Antoninus, because even if he did come back, again, we'd be winning battles, but we wouldn't be improving the overall living situation of the Imperium. Now, the logical jump that I have the most fun with was Vulcan. Vulcan to me represents Nerva, and let me explain. Nerva was elected because nobody hated him, nobody feared him, everyone respected him, and I don't think anybody encompasses the humanity of Nerva quite like Vulcan. Now, in the case of Nerva, I think the strongest correlation or relation, I guess is the term, is when Conrad Kurz captured Vulcan and trapped him and imprisoned him in that labyrinth or whatever. That is an analog to me at least of Nerva being captured by the Praetorian Guard. 
Granted, Nerva got out, and so did Vulcan, and it wasn't really a defining part of their rule. One thing I have to give to Nerva, though, is when he was released, he said thank you to his captors. Vulcan, on the other hand, just hit Kurz with a hammer. But yeah, if you guys like this kind of stuff, let me know. I'll make more of these in the future. I really like Roman history, and I really like the Imperium, and granted, they're essentially the same thing. It's kind of nice to mix them together. If you want more of these, let me know. I can definitely make a part two, and I won't be going back and just redoing the Ranged and Xenocides, because I've already done those, and redoing the Punic Wars just wouldn't be fair.